Welcome to week six, lesson number three, or 6C. We're dealing with solving. So I this might go a little quick, like the previous videos, everything is going to showcase because you need to see the whole thing to really get a clear picture when we're working at this speed. Um, so I've got a lot of solve questions and I'm really just kind of going to go through one at a time. The big thing I'm not going to cover here. So if you are struggling with this is how to solve that inverse trig. So if you're struggling with that, those are your buzzwords to research in Google. You can Google how to solve inverse trig with a calculator or you can Google how to solve it without the calculator, which would be kind of more the effective concept when prepping for calculus next year. So identities from before, PDF, Google, or take a screenshot. Next page. Identities from before, PDF, Google, or take a screenshot. Cool, that's all I got for you, same identities as before. Let's dive on in. Like I said, there's four or five questions here. They're all open, and it's just so I can show you what's the only difference between what we've been doing and what we're doing now, which is that inverse. We've already dealt with inverses in a previous video, so I'm not going to focus on the inverse. I'm just going to show you that connection piece. So if I have tan of x cosine of x minus cosine of x equals zero, well, we've got a repeated value so I can factor, and that's what we did. We went ahead and factored out that cosine. Now I have two awesome identities that are equivalent to the number zero, which means that I can split them up in my class. I said a very, you know, semi inappropriate thing here. I said, we're going to divorce them and split the assets, right? Uh, somehow equally. So we're really, we're just setting each one equal to that zero value. How do I know that I'm ready to solve is because I really end up with just those multiplication values, whether it's three or four or just two, it doesn't matter. Once you're down to just multiplication, you can split them up, set them equal to zero. If I wasn't originally starting with zero, I would get it to zero before dealing with my factor. From here, the thing that's missing is that cosine inverse of zero is equal to x. So if you solve the inverse cosine of zero, that's how you get x. But if you plug it into a calculator, you might end up with some decimal values that don't look like pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2. Or you might not remember to solve for 3 pi over 2. So just remember, when you're using that calculator with trig, use it reasonably. Okay, I know we're at home, but use it reasonably. So 3 pi over 2, how did we get that? I use the hand trick. So if I go backwards, how would I get 0? So the, the hand trick is um, cosine comes from the top, right? Cosine comes from the top, sorry, C over S, cosine over sine. Cosine comes from the top, and so that means whatever finger I fold, the number up top is the one I'm counting, and it's always gonna be divided by two. So let's start with the bottom. If I fold the bottom, the pinky finger, if I'm technically uh, implying that I'm at the angle zero degrees, then this would be the square root of four over two. That's not zero. Let's try at 30 degrees, the square root of three over two. That's not zero. Let's try square root of 2 over 2. That's not 0. Square root of 1 over 2. That's not 0. But if I fold that thumb, which implies the pi over 2, there's nothing above. The square root of 0 over 2 is 0. So there's my answer is the square root of 2. But because we're trig students and we know better, there isn't just the answer of pi over 2. I have to check the unit circle all of my quadrants. With pi over 2, we got lucky. It's not four answers I'm checking. It's just two because pi over 2 is a axis line, so it's only occurring at two points. So we ask ourselves, pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, would cosine be 0 at both instances? It has to be because there, we're not dealing with positives and negatives. Where this would apply more is let's say you were solving the inverse sine of 1. The answer there would also be pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, but only one of those is positive. And that would be pi over 2. If you solve the inverse of negative 1, your only answer would be 3 pi over 2. So just be aware that that's how we get that. They have a little paragraph on the bottom below that kind of shows you how to represent the answer for all solutions. So it says if it wants you to find all solutions, then all you're doing is tacking on this information. So you can see your answers here. And um, somewhere else. I could have sworn that they put it with these as well. But anyway, um, when you tack on this information, that means you're solving for all solutions. That means you're solving for all solutions. But we didn't quite finish this question. All we solved was the left-hand side. So we have to finish solving this tan x. So we bring the 1 over. Now we're solving the inverse tan of 1 for x, right? Because we just literally flipped those flippy flops. Now we go back to our hand. 
This time for tan, it's going to be the square root of the bottom over the square root of the top. So no matter what finger I fold, I want them to be equal, right? Something over something equals one. They have to be equivalent statements. So if I fold the bottom, that's zero over four. Doesn't work. One over three. Doesn't work. What about this one? Three over one. Doesn't work. What about this one? Four over zero. Well, that's undefined. That really doesn't work. But if I fold the middle, I end up with the square root of two over the square root of two. Something over itself. So that is the one value. So that's where they got pi over four. I go to my Astica. And I remember that the only other place besides quadrant one, which is what pi over four is, the only other place that it can be positive is in quadrant three. So there's my quadrant three answer. Let's move on to another one. I know you might feel a little lost, that's okay. Just keep watching, see if you garner this information and then maybe rewatch the video if you struggled. Okay, so sine of x plus the square root of three is equal to negative sine x. It doesn't equal zero yet, so I can't, factor solve or anything like that. So let's deal with that dealing with that not zero value. So I'm going to deal with that negative sine x by adding sine x to both sides. One sine x plus two, one other sine x is equal to two sine of x. It is not sine squared because that would be multiplication. So now if I have two sine of x plus the square root of three equals zero, let's solve. Try to get sine as far by itself as possible, right? So I minus the square root of three. I divide the two. And I end up with this sine of x is equal to negative square root of three over two. That looks really familiar, doesn't it? It looks like the unit circle. So if I look at the one missing value, that's the inverse is equal to x. Well, I go back to my hand. Sine is from the bottom and I want three fingers on bottom. So one, two, three, if I fold the next, that's the angle I'm dealing with. So that's 60 degrees or pi over three, but it's negative. So my answer is not pi over three. I need to figure out my astica. The only claims that sine is negative are down here. So it's not going to be pi over 3. It's not going to be 2 pi's over 3. It's going to be 4 pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. Those are the two answers we're going to get. Because it said uh, solve for all solutions, we're going to tack on that plus 2n pi. Because for this one, you would want to be able to go around a full circle. Moving on to the next question. Ah, we've got some factories, factorability going on here. I see a repeated cosine. So if I pull out that cosine, if I factor out that cosine b, what's left right here if I divide by cosine? Well, only two cosine b. What's left here if I divide by cosine? Negative one, not zero. That's the most common mistake because I see kids just dropping this off. It doesn't happen that way. So now I can split them up, set them both equal to zero. So you ended up with cosine of beta is equal to zero. So we have inverse cosine of zero is equal to beta. Great. Then we have another set. We have two cosine beta minus one equals zero. So we end up with two cosine beta equals one. And then we end up with cosine beta equals one half. And then we end up with the inverse cosine of one half equals beta. Solving. We already know the cosine of zero. We solved that in the first one. So we know that this is pi over two and three pi over two. Great, love it. Let's do the one half. Remember cosine comes from the top and I only want one finger visible on top, right? That's what we're looking for, one. So if one finger is visible, I fold the next, that's gonna be the square root of one over two for angle, uh, what is it, 60, deg 60 degrees or pi over three. For this one, we're gonna have to confirm our astica. So it's looking for a positive one half. Cosine is positive in the first quadrant and in the fourth quadrant. So my answer is pi over three not 2 pi over 3, not 4 pi over 3, uh, but 5 pi over 3. This should be a 5. Don't know where they got 7 from. That's kind of chaos uh, because that would imply that we've gone around more than one circle. But um, so those are answers. And this one doesn't want us to find, oh, it did want us to find all solutions. So we really should have tacked on plus n pi and plus 2n pi over here. Last question, I think, oh, two more questions. So three tan minus cotan. Cool, this one we actually have to do a little bit of identities. So we deal with that reciprocal identity, then we put them together. So this means we have to multiply by a common denominator. So that's the missing step you're not seeing. So we multiply by a common denominator and we ended up with three tan squared minus one over tan squared. Cool, well, three tan squared minus one is uh, we are going to split up. So what we're doing here is just like if you have 
A multiplied by B equals zero, you can do A equals zero and B equals zero. Well, did you know that if you had A over B equals zero, zero, you could split that up into A equals zero and B equals zero. What a concept, the multiplication and division come. So this came here and this, I was like, where did it go? This is somewhere. Oh, I'm a crazy person. Yes, we absolutely could split it up and solve it. But what happens when you split up the denominator and set it equal to zero? Well, we've got an issue there, right? Uh, you don't need denominator set equal to zero. And so, um, because then you'd end up with the undefined moment. So we're really just gonna deal with that top because no matter what your denominator is, if your top equals zero, the whole fraction is gonna equal zero. So that's some, a concept I wasn't quite thinking through when I talked there but make sure you recognize the difference between the multiplication and division. You're gonna just deal with the top. So I'm ignoring the bottom for right now. I'm just dealing with the top. I move the, pot, the negative one over to make a positive one. I divide the three and I deal with that square root. So when I square root it, look what shows up, plus or minus. So when we deal with the astica, guess what? You want all four answers because it is plus or minus. So you're gonna be in all four quadrants. So looking for a one, Really, let's not deal with the rationalized version. Let's first deal with one over the square root of three because that's what we ended up with, right? The square root of one over the square root of three is one over the square root of three. So when we deal with tan, remember with our hand trick, it's the bottom over the top because it's sine over cosine. And so I'm looking for one finger over three fingers. So this is the angle I'm dealing with, that 30 degrees or pi over six. And so pi over six occurs at pi over six, five pi over six, seven pi over six, and 11 pi over six. To find all solutions, we add plus two pi n or two n pi. Done. Last question. What if they give you something funky like this? Well, since I recognize that this looks like ax squared plus bx plus c, I can use the quadratic formula. That is the quadratic formula. If you needed to Google that for yourself, you sure can. Um, how Ms. Jag always remembers it, x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. I literally sing row, row, row your boat, and I have never forgotten the quadratic formula since, so I'll do it one more time. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Please know your quadratic formula. It's important to know. But I plug in those values, boom, there's the answer, and I'm done. Cool beans. That's all I've got for you guys. Good luck with your solves. I know that this is the hardest part.